All right, shalom, y'all. She's the brother of Apollos. Brother Ariyah. We're the mountains of Israel. We're going to bring out a video today that's going to be a, a lot compared to the glory series that we did. It's going to be similar to like a glory part four. So, you know, if you haven't seen part one, two, and three, I would definitely invite you to go back and check it out. It's about how Israel is supposed to receive the glory of Christ. We're supposed to be treated as Christ on earth. And when Christ returns, we're going to receive uh, not only the power of, of, of being him, but God-like power, like being treated as gods and have, having God power in our hands. That's right. Where we can do things that only gods can do. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go through some scriptures on it and we're going to go through first prophecies, you know, just touching on the power that we're about to receive when Christ returns, most high will to keep his commandments as it is written. And then we're going to go through some examples of our power that's written in the scriptures already. It's probably a lot of stuff people just read over, or, you know, be in fairy tale mode in their mind when they read and not really understand this is real life, this is our real family, this is the real powers that we had back then. Mm -hmm. So we're going to go through a few scriptures. Hopefully we can give some understanding out. And uh, everything be good. Uh, let's get started with uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 26. Revelation 2, 26. You know, okay, we're going to do this real quick. Because this thing is in the rough. Time is an uh, airplane. So, Revelation 2 and 26, do it. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 2, verse 26. And he that come overcomes and keeps my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. Mm -hmm. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. As the vessels of a potter shall they be broken into shivers. Now, a lot of people think the kingdom of heaven is just a bunch of people flapping their wings around and everybody just you know, screaming holy, holy, holy to the Lord and then nothing else is going on. Literally, that's it. But the kingdom of heaven is a rulership time. It's a time where the Israelites are going to rule this earth forever. That's what the kingdom of heaven is. It's not just flapping wings around and everybody not going to have wings either. So don't get that uh, confused. So he said, he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. So the nation is not going to have this power, only his people are going to have this power. Mm -hmm. he, said, he said, he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall, shall they be broken to sugar. And in the same way, a potter can take a rod of iron and break a, 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 one of his vessels into pieces. That's the same way we, we will have that same power. Right. To be able to break the nations into pieces. <laughs> and we're going to uh, elaborate on that here in just a second. So this is the power that's coming. The power that's coming to you Israelite men is to be gods on this earth again. To be treated as gods, to be feared as gods, to where the nations understand that we have that connection with the Most High. We are the sons. So uh, let's get a uh, more prophecy, Isaiah 14, verse 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was a, a prophecy. The prophecy is that the ones that overcome and keep his word, they're going to receive power. And that power is going to be able to break the nations. All right? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 14, verse 1. It says, For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel. And set them in their own land. So this is a preview of the kingdom of heaven, which is all this is going to be a preview of the kingdom of heaven. But you know what it's going to be like. The Lord going to have mercy on Israel again. Go ahead. And set them in their own land. And the strangers shall be joined with them. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. So it tell you that the strangers are going to cleave to us. Go ahead. 
and the people shall take them mm -hmm. and bring them to their place. Mm -hmm. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. For what? For servants and handmaids. So all the heathen, you have to understand, your position in the kingdom of heaven is servants and handmaids to Israel. That's right. As it is written. We can't change what it says. We can only go by what it says. And we definitely don't want to be upset at what it says because then we mad at God. Mm -hmm. So it said, uh, they shall be for servants and handmaids. Go ahead. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. We shall what? Take them captive whose captives they were. That's the easy way to know that the Israelites are going to be captives, possessed by another nation of people in the end times when Christ comes. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be the Israelites having their own whole nation like you see the fake Jews today have their own whole nation and have their own government and all that. That's, right. That's not what's going on when Christ returns with the Israelites. The Israelites are going to be in captivity. And he's going to flip it on them where they're going to rule over their oppressors. Go ahead. And they shall rule over their oppressors. Come. So it tell you, they, we're going to take them captive whose captives we were. It's real specific. Now, anybody know who captive? Everybody know who captives we are. Everybody know who's above us. It's not hard to understand. So those are the people that are going to be our captives, going to be our slaves. All right? That's right. Uh, Isaiah 40 and 31. Isaiah 40 and 31. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verse 31. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Mm -hmm. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. Mm -hmm. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. So they tell you clearly that we're going to renew our strength. I mean, we had the strength before, and we're going to get it again. We're going to renew that strength again. They said they're going to mount up with wings as eagles. That's where that flight is taking place. Mm -hmm. They said they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Never getting tired. That's the type of power we're going to have. All right? Never have to worry about the, the things that the mortal body have to worry about again. And on this planet that we on right now, with the same sun out there, the same moon, all that. We're going to be doing this in this realm that we in. Understand that. Uh, give me Jeremiah 51 and 20. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, verse 20. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. So the Lord is speaking to Israel. Matter of fact, give me give verse 19. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 51, verse 19. The portion of Jacob is not like them, mm -hmm. for he is the former of all things, Go ahead. and Israel is the rod of his inheritance. So we're talking about Israel. We're supposed to inherit his power. Go ahead. The Lord of hosts is his name. Mm -hmm. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. So that's what he calls us. He calls us his weapon of war. Mm -hmm. The Lord don't have to come down off the throne and do nothing. He could just dress us up the way he wants us and send us out to do to take care of business. We are his sons. We we're gonna take care of that for him. He don't have to do none. He don't have to touch none of y'all. We got it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. But with thee will I break in pieces the nations. The Lord said, What? With thee will I break in pieces the nations. So the Lord is gonna be the one that's breaking in pieces these nations. The Lord is gonna be the one tearing down these nations. But he's gonna do it with us. He's gonna use us. To do it. And how you're going to do that is by putting power in our hands. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And with thee will I destroy kingdoms. Mm -hmm. And with thee will I break in pieces the horse and his rod. And we're not talking about with guns. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're talking about actual power. Not none of man's power. Mm -hmm. Not the power that, that they have on this earth. It's nothing like what you see right now. Nothing like it. It's going to be mighty power. The same mighty power our family had back then. Well, King David was jumping over walls and all that, running through troops. That's how it's going to be. One shall chase a thousand again. Mm -hmm. That's what's coming. Go ahead. 
And with thee also will I break in pieces man and woman. Mm -hmm. And with thee will I break in pieces old and young. So notice it said man and woman. There ain't going to be no, no feminism in that day that's going to save the woman and say, well, I'm a lady. You can't hit me. There ain't going to be none of that going on. Go ahead. And with thee will I break in pieces the young man and his maid. Mm -hmm. I will also break in pieces with thee the shepherd and his flock. Mm -hmm. And with thee will I break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen. Notice he's being specific and he's reiterating the fact that he's going to do it with us. Over and over he said, and also with thee, and with thee, and with thee, because he's trying to remind you that we're going to be the ones that's going to be doing the damage to the nations with his power. Mm -hmm. So it's not just he's going to come down and do it. He's, he's letting you know, and he reiterating over and over and over in case you forgot the last scripture. All right, go ahead. And I will break in pieces the captains and the rulers. Mm -hmm. And I will render unto Babylon and to all the inhabitants of Chaldea mm -hmm. all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight. So Babylon, which is America, Babylon the Great, this is who he's going to destroy when he says he's going to break in pieces all these nations. First nation is going to be Babylon. All right? He says he's going to render the payback. Ba Babylon is going to receive the payback for all of the things that they did to us, to the children of Israel, to God's people. All right? So that's, again, this is prophecy. We just read Isaiah 14 tell you the Israelites, the Israelites are going to take over this land again and we're going to have everybody as servants and handmaids. Mm -hmm. Here it's telling you how it's going to happen. He's going to use us as weapons of war and we're going to be used to destroy the entire world, to take over this entire world. Alright? That's power. Uh, let's get Michael 4.13. Micah 4 13. We're going to try to keep it short. Whoever's seeing the, the, uh, the ending of it right now, you know if we did or not. <laughs> but we're going to try. We're going to bring out part two next week. Most I will. This is a long lesson. There's a lot of scriptures on it. It's almost impossible to get it all done in one day. Just know for certainty the glory is coming. Oh, yeah. He said, Look, oh, Micah, Micah, Micah. 4 13. 4 13. Mm -hmm. This is the book of Micah, chapter 4, verse 13. Arise and thresh, O daughters of Zion, mm -hmm. for I will make thine horn iron. And I will make your hooves, your hooves brass, mm -hmm. and you shall beat in pieces many people. So what? Beat in pieces many people. That's the Lord say He's going to use us to beat in pieces many people. Go ahead. And I will consecrate their game unto the Lord, mm -hmm. and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. Their what? Their substance mm -hmm. unto the Lord of the whole earth. Yes, there's substance. That's why I tell you in Revelation uh, I think it's 22, we said the gates not going to be closed day and night so they can bring the forces of the Gentiles. I think it's uh, chapter 21. So they can bring the forces of the Gentiles unto us. Alright? And that their kings may be brought. So, he telling me right here what's going to happen. We're going to take this earth over. And when we take it over, we're going to beat in pieces many people. And then we're going to take everything that they got. Mm -hmm. Everything. All right? The same way we left up out of Egypt, same way we're going to leave up out of Babylon. We're taking everything. All right? Anything with any type of substance is coming with the kings. Uh, get that one more again. This is the book of Joel, chapter 4. I mean, Micah, chapter 4, verse 13. Arise and thresh, O daughter of Zion. For I will make thine horn iron, and I will make your hooves brass, mm -hmm. and you shall beat in pieces many people, and I will consecrate their gain unto the Lord, mm -hmm. and their substance unto the Lord of the whole earth. Come, let's get uh, Psalms 149, verse 6. Psalms 149, verse 6. Yeah, 
These are things they really try to hide from our people when it comes to learning the Bible. You know, we learn the Bible just about hugs and kisses, love and all that, but we don't really see that there's the Lord sees his people going through something and he brings vengeance for his people. Mm -hmm. We don't see nothing like that because, you know, they don't want our people to come together. Did I do it? This is the book of Psalms, chapter 149, verse 6. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and the two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance upon the heathen and punishments upon the people. To bind their kings with chains. To do what? To bind their kings with chains. Mm -hmm. And their nobles with fetters of iron. With fetters of iron. So there's people going in chains. Now how is that going to happen? We're going to have power to do it. Mm -hmm. You see, America have literally every weapon you can think of to try to protect themselves. But the thing is, they're going to they be going up against men who they can't kill with no weapon. Mm -hmm. No weapon formed against them shall prosper, that's right? So once that start happening, that's when we're we going to see the end. But uh, keep going. To execute upon them the judgment written, mm -hmm. this honor have all his saints. Mm -hmm. Praise ye the Lord. So it said to execute upon them the judgment written. written. The judgment written is everybody that's wicked not keeping the commandments is going in chains. Mm -hmm. All right, that is the judgment that is written. And it says, um, this honor have all his saints. Again, we are his battle mm -hmm. We are going to be the ones doing the job. And it says it's an honor for us to do this. Mm -hmm. It's not something we, like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to be ready. I don't know if I'm going to do it. So, nah. So we're going to reward them <laughs> double. Straight up. <laughs> they got a reward coming. And this is going to be an honor to reward them this. Mm -hmm. All right? Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. All right, uh, Amos 9. Amos 9 and 11. Amos 9 and 11. It's the book of Amos, chapter 9. Verse 11, in that day will I raise up the tabernacle of David that is fallen mm -hmm. and close up the breaches thereof. Mm -hmm. And I will raise up his ruins and build it as the days of old. Build it as what? The days of old. So in the days of old, we ran off our nation a certain way and we also had power. We were men of power in the days of old. What you're going to see in these examples that we're going to read which I'm sure you already heard of some of the power of the children of Israel. The nations used to fear us mm -hmm. from our power. All right? they, they'd be able to line up uh, a whole army of people and 12 others come through and wipe everybody out. All right? that's, that, that's what was going on straight up. All right? um, it said uh, that they will build it as in the day, and I will build it as in the days of old. Go ahead. That they may possess the remnant of Edom mm -hmm. and all the heathen that which are called by my name, says the Lord that does this. He said the purpose of him doing it is that we will possess the remnant of Edom and of all of the heathen that are called by his name. These are the ones that are doing right, the ones that are righteous, being called by his name, called by the word of God. But the ones that are not doing righteous, those are the ones that's going to be in chains as we just read in the verse before in Psalm 149, verse 6 through 9. They will be in chains. Alright, so he says he's going to raise us up as in the days of old. That days of old is when we had power. Let's get um, Daniel 7 and 16. You going to say something? Nah. Right. 7 and 16. Uh -huh. It's the book of James, chapter 7, verse 16. Mm -hmm. I came near unto one of them that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. Mm -hmm. So he told me, and he made me to know the interpretation of the things. Mm -hmm. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, mm -hmm. which shall arise out of the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom 
and possess the kingdom forever and ever, even forever and ever. So it's telling me that there was going to be four major kingdoms. If you actually go into it, you'll see the four kingdoms that came up. And those kingdoms are uh, the three kingdoms that came up before the kingdom we under now, which is the kingdom of the eagle. And those kingdoms were the ones that were before the worst kingdom. All right, that's what I'll tell you in Daniel 7 if you start at the beginning of the chapter. Point of me coming here is, it says, But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever and ever. Mm -hmm. So we are going to take it. All right? It ain't going to be given to us on the platter. We're going to go out and take it. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, what was that, Revelation 18, 21, where it says, uh, Vive through violence. Let's get that real quick. Revelation 18, verse 21. Mm -hmm. It says, And a mighty angel took up a stone, like a great millstone, and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall the great city Babylon be thrown down, mm -hmm. and shall be found no more at all. So it said, With violence the city going to be taken down. And mm -hmm. who's going to be doing the violence? It's going to be us. That's right. We are going to do major violence to the city of Babylon, to this great city, this great country that y'all think is a godly country. This is the place that the Most High is going to destroy. All right? So he said, with violence, that's how it's going to happen. So that's why I said, the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess it forever and ever. Because we're going to take it with violence. There ain't nothing, ain't nobody, nothing nobody gonna be able to do to stop it. Alright? Let's get uh, Joel 2. Joel 2 and 12, chapter 2 verse 1 blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain let all the inhabitants of the land tremble mm -hmm. for the day of the Lord comes for what comes? the day of the Lord comes the scripture is clear we are talking about the day of the Lord all right go ahead for it is not at hand mm -hmm. a day of darkness and of gloomies mm -hmm. A day of clouds and of thick darkness, mm -hmm. as the morning spread upon the mountains. Mm -hmm. A great people mm -hmm. and strong. A what? A great people. A great people and great. strong. And strong. Go ahead. There has not been ever the light. Mm -hmm. Neither shall there be any more after it. Because he's going to give us even more power than we had before. Go ahead. Even to the years of many generations. And even forever, nobody ever going to have this power. Good. A fire devours before them, mm -hmm. and behind them a flame burns. The power of fire is one of the powers. We're going to get into that a little deeper in uh, part of part two. But go ahead. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, mm -hmm. and behind them a desolate wilderness. Mm -hmm. Yea, nothing shall escape them. So it's saying that before we go through the land, it's going to look beautiful like a garden of Eden. Everything looking great. But after we pass through, it's going to look like a desolate wilderness from what we're going to do to the land. Because we're going to destroy every land that have all of these idols and groves set up everywhere. We're taking down, burning all these images. All the things that y'all out here worshiping, that's going to be taken away from you. We're taking all that. Go ahead. The appearance of them shall, the appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. The what? The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses. Hmm. Later on, we're going to see why that is. They say the appearance of them. Man, what they look like. They look so big, they look like horses. Go ahead. And as horse men shall they run. And as horse men, so shall they run. They're going to be able to run like horses. All right, go ahead. 
Like the noise of chariots on the top of mountains shall they leap. The, like the noise of chariots on top of mountains. What is a chariot on the top of a mountain? That is what you call today a UFO. All right. Like the noise of chariots on the top of mountains shall they leap. That's the, the height they will be able to leap to. All right. Go ahead. Like the noise of a flame of fire mm -hmm. that devours the stubble, mm -hmm. as a strong people set in battle already. As a strong people set in battle already. What is this battle? This is the battle of the end times, where all of the nations gonna be fighting against Christ and the angels. Go ahead. Before their face, the people shall be much pain. Mm -hmm. All faces shall gather blackness. And people are going to be scared when they see us. Go ahead. They shall run like mighty men. They shall run like mighty men, like supermen. Go ahead. They shall climb the wall like men of war. Mm -hmm. And they shall march every one on his ways. Mm -hmm. And they shall not break their ranks. They're not going to break their ranks. Meaning we're not going to be fighting each other. Go ahead. Neither shall one thrust another. Mm -hmm. They shall walk every one in his path. Mm -hmm. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. That's the key right there. All of this is going on with, with people or men that cannot be wounded. That's the key. No weapon form. That's <laughs> no right. weapon form. All right, go ahead. They shall run to and fro in the city. You're going to do what? Run to and fro. In the city. To and fro. In your city. Right. City. <laughs> city. Coming soon. Go ahead. They shall run upon the wall. They shall what? They shall run upon the wall. Oh, be able to run upon walls. Go ahead. They shall climb upon the houses. Mm -hmm. They shall enter into. They shall enter in at the windows like a thief. Coming like a thief in the night, mm -hmm. entering into the windows. Why? Because it's a takeover. Mm -hmm. Everything that you have is going to be taken from you, and you're going to be thrust into the streets, and you're going to be put in chain slavery if you have not repented. Yeah, right. That's what that day going to be like for you. It's going to be scary. It's going to be uh, weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's going to be a lot of people confused because they thought they were serving the Lord, and he's going to say, Get away from me, I never knew you. There's going to be a lot of that going on. Alright, uh, keep going. The earth shall quake before them. Mm -hmm. The heavens shall tremble. Mm -hmm. The sun and moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. Done. And the Lord shall utter his voice before his army. Mm -hmm. For his camp is very great. So he's going to have a huge army. And they ain't going to be small. He says his camp is very great. <laughs> Go ahead. For he is strong that executes his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide? And who can abide in it? All right. The day of the Lord is coming very soon. And it's not going to be nothing like what we told. Here you're saying the day of the Lord is going to be, his people are going to be used as battle axes to destroy the nations and destroy the wicked. That's why he's describing what these people are going to look like, describing the type of power they're going to have, describing the type of ways they're going to be able to run, describing how they're going to be able to fly, describing everything so you can know what is to come. Like I tell you in, uh, what's that, uh, 1 Corinthians 2, let's get that real quick. 1 Corinthians 2, I think it's 12 or something like that, maybe 15. It's the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Uh, these things are freely given to us of God, and the purpose of us having the spirit is so we can bring this out and show everybody what's going on, what's about to happen. Uh, give me verse 9 too. This 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9. But as it is written, 
I has not seen, nor ear heard, mm -hmm. neither have entered into the hearts of man mm -hmm. the things which God has prepared for them that love him. Mm. There's things prepared for us. That's the power we're speaking of. It said, have an entered into the heart of man. Go ahead. But God has revealed them. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. There you go. It said, God has revealed these things to us by his spirit. What is his spirit? The word. Mm -hmm. He's revealing these things by his word. Go ahead. But the spirit searches all things. Mm -hmm. Yea, the deep things of God. That's right. So the Lord is showing us what we're about to receive. He's revealing it to us in his word. I know uh, which one was it? Is that Joel? Give me Isaiah 41. Isaiah 41. Yeah, we're just trying to give y'all a little preview so y'all can understand, you know, it's glory coming to our people. We ain't gonna always be in this situation. We ain't gonna always be on the bottom. But uh, go ahead. Uh, 41, 15. It's the book of Isaiah, chapter 41, verse 15. Behold, I will make thee a new sharp threshing instrument, mm -hmm. having teeth. Mm -hmm. You shall thresh the mountains mm -hmm. and beat them small and shall make the hills as chaff. Mm -hmm. So he said we're going to thresh the mountains. That's the governments of this world. And we're going to beat them small. Go ahead. You shall fan them. And the wind shall carry them away, mm -hmm. and the whirlwind shall scatter them. Mm -hmm. And you shall rejoice in the Lord, and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. And that's what's coming. We're going to rejoice in that day that we have that power, and that we're not on the bottom no more. That we're not getting done the way we're getting done no more. All right, that's just a few of the prophecies that speak on this time to come, on our power to come. Oh, there's many more. All right, that's just a few of them. Let's go into a couple of other books that was taken out of the Bible so we can get a little bit more confirmation. Let's get uh, Enoch. Enoch chapter 50, verse 4. Enoch chapter 50, verse 4. Enoch chapter 50, verse 4. Now, we know that they've taken a lot of our books and they spit in them. They, they, they tainted them. Well, they ain't as profitable, but we can still get a lot of good word out of them long as we filter it through the word of God and understand that the word of God is always going to line up together. It's not going to contradict itself. So let's get that uh, Enoch, you say, Enoch 50 verse 4. It says in those days the mountains shall skip like rams mm -hmm. and the hills shall leap like young sheep mm -hmm. satiated with milk mm -hmm. and all the righteous shall become angels in heaven. The righteous shall what? Become angels in heaven. Okay, that's the reason why we're going, so we can understand. When they tell you the Lord coming back with ten thousand, ten thousands of his angels, a lot of them are right here on earth already. Mm -hmm. He's just gonna turn them into angels. Alright? Go ahead. Their countenance shall be bright with joy. Mm -hmm. For in those days shall the elect one be exalted. Mm -hmm. The earth shall rejoice. The righteous shall inhabit it. And the elect shall possess it. Same thing to tell you in uh, Daniel that the saints are going to inherit the whole earth. We're going to inherit the kingdom. That's what's going to happen. Notice we see the same thing in the book of Enoch. He's going to give power to his people. And after he gives the power to his people, they're going to inherit the entire earth with that power. All right? You got something? Yeah. Uh, it's the book of 1 Corinthians, mm -hmm. chapter 15, verse 49, speaking about. How we're going to be transformed, you know, into uh, bodies of angels. It says, uh, I'm going to start at 49. It says, that as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Come. Now this day I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I will show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, mm -hmm. at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. Incorruptible. And we shall be changed. 
-hmm. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on for when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass that saying which is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. Come. There will be no more death for us. Mm. No more pain. Uh, you read verse 5? I think you just read 4, right? Uh, what's that in Isaiah? Mm -hmm. Enoch. Oh, Enoch. Yeah, just. You read 4? I read 4 and 5. Uh, okay. Uh, read 5 one more time. This is the book of Enoch, chapter 50, verse 5. It says, Their countenance shall be bright with joy. Mm -hmm. For in those days shall the elect one be exalted. Mm -hmm. The earth shall rejoice. The righteous shall inhabit it, inhabit it, and the elect shall possess it. We are going to possess the entire earth. All right? Again, like we did before. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, Enoch 95, verse 1. Please, please. This is the book of Enoch, chapter 95, verse 1. Wait in hope, ye righteous, for suddenly shall sinners perish from before you. And you shall exercise dominion over them mm. according to your will. Read that again from the top. Wait in hope, ye righteous. Mm -hmm. For suddenly shall sinners perish mm -hmm. from before you. Mm -hmm. And you shall exercise dominion over them according to your will. That's what's coming, brethren. <laughs> We're going to exercise dominion over the wicked according mm -hmm. to our own will. According to how you feel. According to what you want to do. All right, they're going to become your slaves, your servants. Go ahead. In the day of the sufferings of sinners, your mm -hmm. offspring shall be elevated mm -hmm. and lifted up like eagles. The day of the suffering of sinners. That's what's going to be going on in the, in the kingdom of heaven. It's going to be the suffering of sinners. Mm -hmm. The righteous are going to be flourishing and the sinners are going to be suffering. That's what's going to be going on. Not just burned up in fire and never to be seen right. again. No, it's going to be in the day of the suffering of sinners. Go ahead. And lift it up like eagles. Like what? Eagles. I tell you that our offspring is going to be lifted up like eagles. Go ahead. Your nest shall be more exalted than the rest of the abyss. Mm -hmm. You shall ascend and enter into the cavities of the earth. He said we shall ascend and enter into the cavities of the earth. The ascend means go upward. Go ahead. And into the cliffs of the rocks mm -hmm. forever, mm -hmm. like conies mm -hmm. from the sight of the ungodly, mm -hmm. who shall groan over you and weep like sorrow. That's the weeping and gnashing of teeth. They're going to see us flying around and flying up into our mountaintop houses where we are able to be away from them and they down here on the ground in sin, or not I ain't gonna say in sin, in punishment. Because ain't nobody gonna be in sin mm -hmm. at that time. But they're gonna be in punishment, getting their behind toe up because they chose not to follow the laws, not to repent. And so like I tell you in uh second address, let's grab that real quick. Second address uh was it nine? Yeah nine. Second address nine and seven. More of what's to come. This is all prophecies of what's to come. Over and over. It tell you what's going to happen. We've been ignoring it for far too long. And when the king comes, just know he's going according to this hill. He's not going according to your feelings. Uh, go ahead, verse 7. This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter 9, verse 7. Mm -hmm. And every one that shall be saved mm -hmm. and shall be able to escape mm -hmm. by his works mm -hmm. and by faith Whereby ye have believed. Notice it said works and faith. You have to do both. You got to have both. Go ahead. Shall be preserved from the said perils. There's perils coming. It said the people that's obeying him are going to be preserved from that. Go ahead. And shall see my salvation mm -hmm. in my land mm -hmm. and within my borders. For I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. Come on. Go ahead. Then shall they be in pitiful case 
which now have abused my ways. They're not going to be burned up in fire. They're going to be in a pitiful case. That's what the people are going to be in in the kingdom of heaven. In a pitiful case. They ain't going to get away just getting burned up. No, you're going to be mocked. Mm -hmm. You're going to be a mockery forever. Same way you out here mocking people and being disrespectful to the people of God, being disrespectful to the men of the Lord out here teaching the Bible because you're getting this license in America to do it. You're going to be mocked forever. That's what's coming to you. All right? The Lord said he's going to laugh at your calamity. He's going to mock when your fear comes. That's what he said in Proverbs 1. All right, go ahead. He says, they shall be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. Mm -hmm. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torments. Mm -hmm. For such as in their life have received benefits mm -hmm. and have not known me. So the Lord said, the ones that in their life receive benefits and have not known him, they're going to dwell in torments in the kingdom of heaven. That's what he's talking about. They're going to live in torments. All right? We're not making this stuff up. We're just telling you what he said. And a lot of people just don't want to keep it 100 with you and tell you, look, it's not going to be a pretty sight when the Lord returns for the majority of the people of this earth and majority of the so-called Christians as well because they're not keeping his commandments. All right, go ahead. And they that have loathed my law, those are the ones that's hating God's laws, while they yet had liberty, while they got freedom right now, and when as yet the place of repentance was opened unto them, mm -hmm. understood not, mm -hmm. but despised it. The same must know it after death, by pain. After death by pain. What's that? That's Luke 16 behavior right there. You're going to mm -hmm. get put in that fire until you are brought back to face your judgment. Yes, there's spiritual fire. Yes. There's fire under the earth right now where souls are being held for being in, in wickedness and not keeping God's commandments. You got that one? Before you go. Uh, I was gonna grab Matthew twenty five and forty six. Talk about uh, they're gonna be in eternal, I mean everlasting punishment. Uh, this is the book of Matthew chapter twenty five verse forty six. Um, when you read, you know, a couple verses up, starting about forty, you know, it tell you what's gonna happen to those who are doing certain things to his brother, whether whether brothers, which we know are the men of Israel, whether it be you know good or evil, but you know at the end. It's all according to what you're doing to Christ. You see it just like you're treating him. So for treating us not how you wouldn't be treating Christ, like you'll see in the other series that the brother came out with, um, there's a judgment for it. So verse 46 says, And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. So it's going to be some everlasting punishments coming, just like he promised everlasting life if we don't repent. Which one you read? It was just verse 46. Okay. The last verse. Yeah. Everlasting. Which cuts all of that just, you know, where they just going to take a little judgment. Like they be saying mm -hmm. some of Israel is going to take a little judgment and then they be right there in the kingdom when everybody else is living it up. Look. We got a video called Lake of Fire is Slavery Part 3. <laughs> And that's all about Israel going in slavery that don't want to obey God. Mm -hmm. All right? It's not just going to be the, the um, heathen in slavery. It's going to be wicked Israelites as well in slavery in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. 
I know y'all don't want to hear it. Y'all want to hear all Israel going to be on top in the kingdom. That's not the case, though. Because the wicked is going to be a ransom for the righteous, as the scripture said. Right. All right? And he is no respecter of persons. He's serious about that. T.D. Jakes is going to be in slavery if he don't repent and start teaching God's commandments. All right? Um, which one you read before that? What was it, 95? We did 95. Yeah, we did 95. Okay, let's get one in Jubilees. Jubilees. Now, mind you, you can find them in Jasher. You can find them in uh, Josephus. You can find them in all of the, the, the books because all of it gives you a picture of the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. It gives you a picture of the end time. Oh, so you look hard enough, you can find the, the actual truth of what's going on in the kingdom of heaven in almost every biblical book. All right. Um, Jubilees 32, 19. It's the book of Jubilees, chapter 32, verse 19. And I will give to your seed all the earth which is under heaven. Mm -hmm. And they shall judge all the nations according to their desires. Mm -hmm. And after that, they shall get possession of the whole earth mm -hmm. and inherit it forever. This is clear. This is what the kingdom of heaven is. Forever we inherit the earth and we're going to judge the nations. He said, I will give, I will give to thy seed, your children, the children of Israel, all the earth which is under heaven. Not some of the earth, the whole earth. Mm -hmm. All right. And they shall judge all the nations, not some of the nations, according to their desires, according to what we want to judge them on. And we know it's going to be according to the scriptures as well. And after that, they shall get, but after that, after the judgment, us bringing judgment on the nations, they shall, they shall get possession of the whole earth and inherit it forever. This is the same thing we've seen in Daniel. All right. It's the same thing we've seen in Enoch. This all over in the Holy Scriptures. It tells you what's going to happen. It tells you how it's going to happen. But for some reason, we filling up churches that's telling us it's just going to be people flapping wings in the kingdom of heaven. I can't count how many Christians that I came across and I told and I asked them, well, what's the kingdom of heaven look like? And they can't give you an answer. Been Christian their whole life. And can now give you an answer of what the kingdom of heaven looks like. What's going to be going on in the kingdom of heaven. They can't give you an answer. Why? Because the truth of what's really going on in the kingdom of heaven. They can't give you that. They can't tell you that. Because then you're going to understand. You have to change your life. You can't keep living how you want to live. Because there's judgments coming on the other side. Matter of fact, get a Luke 12, 47 real quick. Luke 12, 47. The Lord continuously lets you know what's going to happen. This is the book of Luke, chapter 12, verse 47. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will, mm -hmm. and prepared not himself, mm -hmm. neither did according to his will, mm -hmm. shall be beaten with many stripes. This is what's coming. All right? Beaten. <laughs> now, you're not going to be burned up in fire and then never exist again. Stop believing that. Your soul is eternal, all right? He's going to punish you forever. That's what he's going to do. He's going to put you in a position where you're going to be in punishment forever. You're going to be in slavery forever. That's why he said there should be weeping and gnashing of teeth. That's crying and pissed off. People gnash their teeth when they're mad. So people are going to be mad in the kingdom of heaven because they're seeing the things that God's children are able to do. They're not able to do it. All they're going to be able to do is work. Build up our kingdom. That's what they're going to be doing. Working in the field. You're not just going to be sitting in the field chilling. You're going to be working. And angels going to be watching you. Make sure you don't stop or slow down or none of that. And you're going to be beaten with many stripes. This is what's to come. All I can do is hope people are reading and listening. Because this is right here in front of our face. But a lot of people think Christ coming back to hand out hugs and kisses, mm -hmm. lollipops, candy, and flowers. And that's not the case. It tell you here 
that he is coming back to hand out ass whoopings mm -hmm. and chains for everybody. So we're going to cut it down. Oh, no, I'm tripping. I'm tripping. I got, we got to get a couple of the examples. That was all the prophecy. That was all the prophecy. For all the ones we're pulling today. There's many more. I'm sure a lot of y'all can come up with something off the rip right now. Because there's so many talking about our kingdom and what's, com what's coming. So let's get a few examples of our power. Let's get um, our forefather David. Ecclesiasticus 47 and 1. Now, a lot of people kind of look at the Bible as a fairy tale. So they, they not really grasp grasping what's going on here. They're not understanding it's the book of the records of our fathers, of the things our fathers did. So when we read this, we have to understand this is real life. This is what was really going on. No matter how amazing it sounds, this is real life and what was happening with our family. And this is the reason why our family's name have been taken from us. Because we're just too great. And this is showing you just how great we are. Mm -hmm. uh, they do say nothing is impossible for God. And if we his sons, you know, come on now. <laughs> I mean, we're talking of a family of brothers that we come from a family of men that were able to tell the sun to stop moving in the sky. <laughs> <Straight up. laughs> we're the sons of the power. We're the sons of the creator. Yashar El. Come. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's get... Okay, go ahead, verse 1. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, or Sirach, chapter 47, verse 1. And after him rose Nathan to prophesy in the, in the time of David, mm -hmm. as is the fact taken away from a piece of offering, so was David chosen out of the children of Israel. Mm -hmm. He played with lions as with kids. Mm -hmm. And with bears as with lambs. So he said he played with lions. <laughs> All right. He played with lions like he was playing with baby goats. That's what a kid is. Mm -hmm. He played with lions like they was baby goats. If you ever play with a baby goat, they're absolutely harmless. There's nothing they can do to you even if they try. Sure. <laughs> that's how a lamb, I mean, that's how a lion is to King David. <laughs> This is the power when he say he's going to renew our strength. This is what we're going back to. To where a lion. I mean, it's several stories of our forefathers killing lions. Mm -hmm. All right, several stories. So he said, and with bears as lambs. Again, you ever had a little baby lamb in your hand? The, the, it's nothing that he could do. This is how our forefather was playing with them bears. King David will go slap a bear right in the mouth. Nothing the bear can do about it. Straight up. All right? We have to understand that's how great we are being the sons of the power. And that's what's coming back. Dominion over everything. Over everything. All right. Um, Joshua 39 and 7. Joshua 39 and 7. Book of Joshua, chapter 39, verse 7. And the inhabitants of Arbalan heard the noise of the shouting of the sons of Jacob, mm -hmm. and their roaring like the noise of lions. And their what? Their roaring like the noise of lions. The scripture is telling you that when they roared, they sounded like lions. All right, this is power. Go ahead. And the like the noise of lions and like the roaring of the sea and its waves. Loud, powerful. All right, go to uh, Joshua. We're going to flip through a few of these real quick. Uh, Joshua 72 and 24. So he said the, the, the noise of the shouting of the sons of Jacob sounded like the roaring of lions. All right, it's only 12 brothers. Sound like the, the waves of the sea. 724. Mm, 24. 72, 24. This is the book of Jasher, chapter 72, verse 24. 
and the king and princes and all the fighting men loved Moses, mm -hmm. for he was great and worthy. Mm -hmm. His stature was like a noble lion. His stature was like what? Like a noble lion. Uh -huh. His face was like the sun, mm -hmm. and his strength was like that of a lion. His strength was what? Like that of a lion. I tell you, Moses' strength was like the strength of a lion. Mm -hmm. All right? This is what our people come from. This is what they're trying to keep us from by not uh, by keeping us from understanding our heritage and our people mm -hmm. and how to come back to God's law so he can give this back to us. This is what we're missing. We don't understand that we come from a very rich heritage. All right, go ahead. And he was counselor to the king. And he was a counselor to the king. Uh, give me 1 Chronicles 12 and 8. 1 Chronicles 12 and 8. Remember, these are just examples of our power. Said he had the stature of a lion. <laughs> Remember, our forefathers Simeon and Levi went through and killed all the people in the cities of Shechem. All the men in the cities of Shechem. After uh, one of the Hamite kings ended up sleeping with one of our, uh, uh, with dinner, uh, one of the, the patriarchs, the patriarch's sister. Mm -hmm. So you said first comment is what? Uh, 12 and 8. 12 and 8. It's the book of First Chronicles, chapter 12, verse 8. And of the Gadites that separated themselves unto David into the whole, to the wilderness, men of might and men of war. Fit for a battle mm -hmm. that could handle shield and buckler, mm -hmm. whose faces were like the faces of lions, mm. and were as swift as the rose upon mountains. So this is another one that they not really telling y'all. He mm -hmm. said, whose faces were as the faces of lions. Now, did we read the other one about the um, Oh yeah, we did, we did. Okay, where it tell you that the righteous won't become as angels. Mm -hmm. So angels were able to change their form to different things. Here, that's when it's, when it's telling you they have faces of the face of lions. They really have faces like the faces of lions. Mm -hmm. If you go back in uh, history, like some of the old school Sumerian uh, statues and all that, what you'll see is you'll see a lot of kings with the bodies of lions or the faces of lions and the bodies of men. That's what you see in the, the Sphinx. The Sphinx is the head and of a man in the face of, I mean, the body of a lion. It was either one or the other. He's the head of the lion, face of the man, head of the man, face of the lion. The power was to be able to transform into these animals, into these different forms. Again, it's powers of the angels. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you, these men had faces like the faces of lions and were as swift as the rolls upon the mountain. <laughs> That's how fast they are. Fast as deers on the mountain. If you ever tried to chase a deer, you already know it's not happening. Mm -hmm. All right, so uh, Joshua 54, verse 46. There's major power coming, brothers. Major power. We just got to stay in line. Mm -hmm. You say 54? 54, 54, verse 46. 46. We got to wait on the Lord, brothers. We can never pay them back the type of, with the type of payback they deserve anyway. Only the Lord can do that. And you seeing how he going to do it when he returns. We just got to wait on him. This is the book of Joshua, chapter 54, verse 46. Mm -hmm. And while they were fleeing, Judah and his brethren pursued them unto the house of Pharaoh, mm -hmm. and they all escaped. Mm -hmm. And Judah again sat before Joseph. And roared at him like a lion. And roared at him like a lion. This is when Joseph was holding captive Benjamin and sent the brothers back to uh, get their father. This was right before that. So Judah was getting pissed off at this moment. And <laughs> he was pretty much tired of the nonsense. This is a good chapter. You might want to read the whole Joshua chapter 54. Because it describes a lot of the powers that our brothers had. 
So said jo uh, Judah roared at him like a lion. Go ahead. And gave a great and tremendous shriek at him. Mm -hmm. And the shriek was heard at a distance. Mm -hmm. And all the inhabitants of Sakoth heard it. Mm -hmm. And all Egypt quaked at the sound of the shriek. The, the land was quaking. <laughs> but it was causing an earthquake from screaming. Go right. ahead. The walls of Egypt and of the land of Goshen mm -hmm. fell in the fell in from the shaking of the earth. So the, the earthquake that Judah caused from screaming caused walls to fall down. Mm -hmm. Alright, go ahead. And Pharaoh also fell from his throne upon the ground. Mm -hmm. And also all the pregnant women of Egypt. Some of them. All the pregnant women of Egypt mm -hmm. and Goshen miscarried when they heard the noise of the shaking. So all of them. Why? For they were terribly afraid. He said all of the women of Egypt that was pregnant had a miscarriage mm. because they were scared of the noise that they heard from Judah yelling at Joseph. All right? That's powerful, man. Powerful. <laughs> what nobody say. This where we come from. All right? This why they had to change our name. They don't want you to know you come from this. Mm -hmm. uh, Joshua 71 verse 9. Joshua 71, verse 9. 71, 9. This is the book of Joshua, chapter 71, verse 9. And Pharaoh heard of this affair, and he ordered Moses to be slain. Hmm. So God sent his angel, and he appeared unto Pharaoh in the likeness of of a captain of the guard. He said the angel did what? Appeared unto Pharaoh mm -hmm. in the likeness of a captain of the guard. Again, that's just showing the angels have power to change their appearance. It said he appeared as he was a captain of the guards. Alright? That's another precept just showing you that the angels are, are not just in one form. They can change to many different forms. As we just stated a second ago about how they can change into a lion. Mm -hmm. There's also a precept, I can't, the, the book kind of escaping me now, but it's a, it's a precept where the Lord sent the angels, he sent two angels to protect Israel and they came down in the form of like 10,000. That's like, I think it's like Ezekiel or... Um, I was just think, literally thinking of that same one. In the form of like 10,000 people. You know what I'm saying? They scared away everybody. The form, the angels have great, great power. Nowhere near the power of the Lord, of course. But they have great, great power. And their power was given to them by our king. By the one that chose us to be his, his special chosen people. All right, um... Uh, Okay, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. My bad. I ain't found it. That's all right. We can see from this one. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> Ezekiel 1 and 13. Ezekiel 1 and 13. Mm -hmm. It's the book of Ezekiel. Chapter 1, verse 13. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire. Like what? Burning coals of fire. The appearance of these angels was like burning coals of fire. Go ahead. And the appearance of lamps. Mm -hmm. It went up and down among the living creatures. Mm -hmm. And the fire was bright. And out of the fire went forth lightning. Mm -hmm. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. It said the living creatures, <laughs> the angels, was running so fast, it looked like a flash of lightning. Like lightning. That's how fast they left and how fast they returned. Again, this is the power that's to come. This is the power that the Lord will lay on his sons. And we're going we gonna to use this power to take our earth back, to take our possessions back. 
which is the earth and the heat. Alright? Uh, let's get First Chronicles 11.22. The book of 1 Chronicles, chapter 11, verse 22. Benaiah, the son of Jehodiah, the son of a valiant man of Kabzil, whom had done many acts, he slew two lion-like men of Moab. Mm -hmm. Also, he went down and slew a lion in a pit in a snowy day. He slew a lion. All right, another example of one of our forefathers killing lions. All right. Uh, let's get Isaiah 43 and 1. Isaiah 43 and 1. The book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 1. But now, Thus says the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. Mm. I have called thee by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Mm -hmm. And through the rivers, rivers, they shall not overflow thee. Mm -hmm. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burnt. When you, what? When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burnt. Mm -hmm. Walk through the fire, ye shall not be burned. So the one thing that they feel can destroy everything on this planet, it will not be able to destroy us in that time. Alright? When we walk through the fire, we will not be able to be burned. No weapon formed shall prosper. That's right. Alright? Hopefully, you know, y'all got some understanding with that one. Uh, we're going to break it right here. And set it up for part two next week. And we're going to go a little bit further in depth on, you know, what's to come and the powers to come. So hopefully y'all got some understanding. You want to add something? No, I'm good, G. Come, come. We'll get at y'all later, though. For sure. Shalom.